Hey, what's up everybody? Tutal Toby here. And in today's On Shape step-by-step -step tutorial, we got a really fun model. This one is called Simple Pipe with Bends. And it comes from the Tutal Toby library of 2D to 3D challenges found over here at tutaltoby.com. So I'm gonna click here to get started with free models. And here we can see we've got a repository of over 130 2D to 3D challenges for you to try to build a 3D model and come up with the correct mess. Now there's about 20 challenges on here that are totally free for everyone. And then if you really enjoy the app, you can upgrade to the premium membership and that will grant you access to the entire library. Well, one of these challenges that's totally free for everyone is this one here, 250107. So I'm gonna click here to practice. And here we can see that 99 people have completed this model. So maybe we can become number 100. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here. I'm gonna say click here to begin and go. What is the mass of this part in xx.x pounds? Oh man. So we're gonna try to calculate the mass and then put it down here in this box. And it looks like the title block is saying that this unit system is IPS, which means inch, pound, second. So the dimensions are all in inches and then the answer is gonna be in pounds. And we can also see here that the material is plain carbon steel and the density is 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. So before we get started with actually modeling this thing, let's just take a minute and talk about our game plan. Cause it looks like we're gonna be creating a model here with a sweep and we don't do this too often here on these two tall Toby challenges. But what a sweep is, is it's a feature that uses two different sketches. The first sketch that we create is gonna be created here on the top plane. And that's gonna be a sketch of a line that starts here and comes over at 18 millimeters. Then it's got a radius here. It looks like this radius is nine, nine. Then it's gonna come up here at this 60 degree angle. Then we're gonna wrap around this radius nine again. This bend here has a 90 degree angle, another radius of nine. Then we're gonna end up with a straight line here. So that's what we call our sweep path. And we're gonna sketch that on the top plane and we'll probably put the origin right down here. And then once we've got that sweep path created, what we're gonna do is create what's called a sweep profile. So probably here on the right plane, looking in here, like right here on the right plane, we're gonna create a sweep profile and that sweep profile is gonna be two circles, a circle with a diameter of two inches and a circle with a diameter of 1.5 inches. And then we're gonna use that profile and that path to sweep this shape, this tube shape along the path. And then once we've got that geometry in place, in place, the only thing we're gonna need to do is add in these six inch diameter flanges. So you can see I've got the six inch flange by uh, one inch thick, and there's a 1.5 uh, inch hole in that flange. And then similarly up top here, we've got a six inch flange. It's uh, one inch thick, and it's got a 1.5 inch hole in that flange as well. So that's the game plan for this model. I know we took a couple of minutes to come up with that game plan, but I think it's always important to come up with a game plan. I think it really makes the 3D modeling go a lot more smoothly. And if you agree, be sure to hit the like button on this video. And with that, let's bring up our keyboard cam. Let's move this drawing over here onto our second screen and let's get into it here in Onshape. I'm gonna choose to create a new document. I'm gonna call it 25-01-07, simple, pipe with bends and I'm going to create this in the public space in Onshape. So if anybody wants to look up my file, just log into Onshape and search the public space for this text string. So I'm going to say create public document and then I'm going to get back, get right into my game plan. Now, the one thing I need to remember to do is go up here to this hamburger menu. So here's the hamburger menu. This is where we change our units. So I'll fly out this menu here and I will say workspace units and the workspace units here are gonna be inches, so inch, and then our uh, mass default unit is gonna be pounds, so inches and pounds. And then I'm gonna hit the green check mark and then top plane, S key, begin a sketch, and then the letter N to get normal too. And here on the top plane, what I'm gonna do is start out by creating a line single click the origin, move over to the right here, single click, and then I'm gonna let go of my mouse and I'm gonna type 18, enter. 
And that's going to give me this kind of straight section here, this straight uh, 18 millimeter or 18 inch section right here. Now, a little trick that I like to do with a layout like this whenever I'm doing a pipe layout is I know that the end point of this pipe is right here. This is 60 inches up and it's 15 inches over. So I'm just going to create a line here that is 10 inches long. And then I'm going to finish up the sketch by creating the connecting lines here. And I just think that's a little bit easier and it helps me establish a sense of proportion. So I'm going to create a second line here. I'll just kind of zoom out a little bit. S key line, single click, move my mouse straight down, single click, let go of my mouse, 10. And then I'm going to add a dimension here and this dimension. So, S, so hit escape, S key dimension this dimension is going to go from the origin over to this line and it's going to have a value of 15 inches and this dimension is going to go from the origin to this end point and it's going to have a value of 60 inches and that just kind of helps me set up the overall boundary of this sketch and i think that makes it a little easier to lay out the rest of the sweep path so now I'm going to press the S key and go to the line command again. I'm going to single click here on this end point. I'm going to move away. Now I'm not clicking anything. And then I'm going to move my mouse back over that end point and then move away again. And that's how you toggle between creating a line and a tangent arc. I'm not clicking anything, but I am kind of automatically toggling into the tangent arc command. So I'll create a tangent arc here, single click, and then let go of my mouse, nine, enter. I'm going to create a line that comes up here. You'll notice that you can pick up tangency while you're creating these lines. That can be a nice time saver. Single click. I'm going to move my mouse back to this end point, move my mouse out and around this way. Single click, let go of my mouse, nine, enter. I'm going to move my mouse this way. Try and pick up on tangency going in this direction as well. Single click, move my mouse back over that end point, move my mouse away. And I'm just going to connect it here to this end point, let go of my mouse, and I'm going to press nine, enter. And now at this point, I'm going to press escape and I'm just going to kind of test the sketch a little bit. I'm going to grab some of these points and move them around. And oh, wow, look, I have a problem here. It looks like I didn't get tangency. So just by moving that point around, I can tell that this arc and this line here are not tangent. So you just grab a blue point, move it around. So what I can do is I can pick that arc, pick that line, and then press T on my keyboard, and that adds tangency. And so now I'll grab this point and move it, and it looks like maybe I've got the same problem up here. Yeah, click this line, click this arc, T, and now those two go tangent as well. And so now I can add in my angle dimensions. So S key, dimension. There's going to be a dimension here with an angle of 60. And then a dimension here with an angle of 90. And oh yeah, that is looking good. Now again, if your sketch is not fully constrained at this point, just grab a blue point and move it around and see what gives. And that can help you figure out what you need to add. So in this case, I need to add a dimension. So S key dimension and this dimension here is going to have a value of nine inches. And so now I'm going to exit that sketch and then I'm going to click on that sketch over here in the tree and I'm going to press shift N and I'm going to rename that sketch to sweep path. And after I've got that sweep path in place, I'm ready to create my sweep profile, which is going to be those two circles right here at this end point. So I'll just go right down here to the right plane, S key, sketch, S key, circle, single click, move my mouse, single click again. Let go of my mouse, two, enter, single click, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, 1.5, enter, and whoops, looks like when I made that 1.5, it wasn't right on the origin. I could take this point and move it onto the origin, but I just want to do this right the first time. So S key, circle, single click right there, right on the origin, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, 1.5. Oh yeah, first try. Be sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying that first try. And then I'm going to hit the green check mark. And then over here in the tree, I'm going to rename this one to Shift N Sweep Profile. And so now I can launch the sweep command. And there's a pretty sweet shortcut you can use when you're doing sweeps in Onshape. And it looks a little something like this. First, I click the sweep command. So click the sweep command. Then I come over here to the tree and I click the sweep profile. So you pick the profile first. That's what's being asked for here in this first box. Pick the faces or the regions to sweep. So I'm going to pick the profile first. Then I'm going to press tab on my keyboard. And what that does when you press tab on your keyboard is it advances your selection here into the next box, which is, which is going to be the path. So I press tab on my keyboard. Then I pick the path 
and then I press the enter key on my keyboard and boom, there is your sweep. So I'm gonna press control Z here and I'm gonna do this in real time now. So pick the sweep command, pick the profile, press tab, pick the path, press enter. That is a fast sweep. So be sure to try those workflows, especially when you're doing these practice models. It's a great way to really refine your workflows so you can use them in the real world, you know, when you're actually trying to do work. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in down here on this end of the pipe. I'm gonna pick this face right here, S key, begin a sketch. And then I'm gonna pick this edge here, the inside edge. And instead of sketching a circle there, I'm just gonna reuse that edge by clicking this button here, use project convert. So that basically takes that edge and traces it into a circle in this sketch. And that means that all I need to do is S key circle, pick this point here, move my mouse, single click, let go of my mouse, six, enter, S key, extrude, and then I'm gonna press tab, 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 one, enter, enter. I know one is the default, but just in case it wasn't, I like to just practice the workflow. So now I just rotate around to this other end of the sweep, and on this other end of the sweep, I'm gonna pick this face, S key, begin a sketch, pick this arc, convert, and then S key, circle, single click here, move my mouse, single click, six, enter, S key, extrude, and then I'm gonna bring that extrusion out, tab, 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 one, enter, enter, and boom, I'm gonna press shift seven. That's your shortcut for isometric view. I'm gonna press P to hide my planes. I'm gonna come down here to the name of the part, right mouse button and say edit appearance. I always like to go in and kind of make these parts look a little bit more like what the customer gave me on the drawing. And then I'm going to right mouse button on this part and I'm gonna to go to assign material. This material is gonna come from the TTT custom material library. And I'll fly out this menu here and I'll choose plain carbon steel. And now to measure the mass, I can go down here. It's kind of behind the clock, this little scale here. So I click on that scale for mass property. I click on the part anywhere and I'm coming up with an answer of 52.43. So let's go down here into that mass box, 52.43, enter. And yes, we did it. We got it correct. That is awesome. So congratulations, your answer is correct. We choose submit here. And when we do, we can scroll down and see some additional analytics. So we can see here that our our time for this model was 11 minutes and one second. Looks like the average time was eight minutes and 31 seconds. That is awesome. So we're getting closer to those average times. And of course, if I wanted to beat that average time, I could click this try again button. But for now, I'm just happy that I was able to come up with the correct answer. And now 100 people have completed this model. That is awesome. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Be sure to leave me some comments down below if you have any questions or if there's something cool that you learned from this video. And of course, be sure to visit us at twotalltoby.com where you can sign up and try about 20 of these challenges totally for free today. And then if you really like the app, you can upgrade to a premium membership. And I will look forward to seeing all of you in the next Two Tall Toby on Shape Tutorial.